Hello everyone, my name is Napoleon Kaufman. I'm the senior pastor here at the Well Christian Community. And I want to thank you for tuning in for Times of Refreshing. It's not just necessary to receive forgiveness of sins, although it does forgive, helps to forgive us of our sins or to receive forgiveness of sin. But it's an empowering agent. It empowers you. It makes you strong on the inside, capable and able. That's what grace does. And so the Apostle Paul, he's telling Timothy to be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. God has given you grace he has given you an unmerited benefit. The benefit is you now have power to overcome your sin and you've received forgiveness of sin. And so I want to use that as a tool in my life. I want to use that in my mind. I want my mind to become strong, to become powerful, to become a fortified place for truth and righteousness and that and so that the devil can't just play games in my head. Have me up at one, two or three o'clock in the morning thinking about stuff and tripping off stuff and and worrying about stuff. That my mind has been settled. There's the peace of God is guarding my 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 heart and my mind. He's given my mind a sense of peace. He's clothed me with the helmet of salvation so I can rest at night. I know who I am in God. Well, what happens is God wants us to use the grace that he has and be strong in the grace. So many people are weak in their faith and weak in their thinking. And they let the devil push them around when God is telling us to be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. There's grace for that, for your thinking. He has left us, now watch this, grace leaves us without excuse for victory. If you want to win, you can win. If you want to win, you can win. If you want to have a good day, you can have a good day. Can I have an amen? If you want to have a good life, you can have a good, what happens is God empowers us. And the circumstances don't determine that. It's, it's who, I, I, who I become on the inside that determines that. That God has done something in me that has made me different and he's empowered me within. Well, we have to get our minds on this fact that God's given me grace to be strong in him. And that means even in my thinking that I can be strong in my thought life. He says in verse 2, and the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. I love this. And so one of the reasons, one of the ways in which we can grow in strength when it comes to our thinking is learning how to get with people who have overcome in their thinking. Get around people that you know that don't, you know, get around people that you know they don't have stinking thinking. That you watch them and they're consistent and they seem like they're, they're on. And then learn to tell, tell, tell stories about it. You know, I tell people all the time. I, was, I, I tweeted this a couple, couple weeks ago. You know, you want to get around some people that got a few scars. The lion with the most scars is the one that can tell you how to make it through adversity and come through on the other side. Can I have an amen, y'all? You want to get around some people that have been around the block a little bit in this thing and know how to overcome, and you've seen them overcome and know how to win in their mind, and you don't see them flipping out. You see them consistent. You want to sit down and talk with people that you know have had some adversity, but yet, man, they stay their mind. They got the mind of Christ. They got the mind of Christ. You see, man, they got the mind of Christ. You just see how God is just with them and how they're always focused and intent and intentional about what they're doing. They don't get caught up in all this mess. And you want to get around people like that and then ask 
questions those people and i love this he says commit those things to faithful men who can go off and teach others also if you win in your mind start teaching somebody else how to win in their mind can i have an amen y'all start start set start sharing the secrets tell them this is how you do it, man. You want to overcome lust? Let me tell you how to overcome lust. This is how you do it. You want to you get your mind set so you don't harbor, harbor unforgiveness and different things? Let me show you how to do this. This is how you do it. And since we have to be humble enough to, to tell people that, man, I'm not doing good at this right now. Can you help me? I see you're good. Show me how to do this. Well, what happens is people get lifted up with pride. And they don't want to just come out and say, hey, man, this right now, my thinking is off. Can you help me? Talk me through this. Talk me off the cliff. The person, now listen to this. The scripture says, the person who isolates himself seeks his own desire. When you start getting to the point where you don't want to tell nobody. And you sneak off and I don't want to tell anybody I'm struggling. And then you sneak off and you get alone with your computer. Start fiddling around on there. You click. Click, and then next thing you know, your mind is in a different world. And then somebody comes in the door. Oh, oh, what you doing? What you looking at? Oh, I don't know nothing. God is a good God. Yes, he is. God. Can I preach it this morning, y'all? What you looking at? person who isolates himself seeks his own desire. We got to learn to get our minds out of the trash. Talk to people. I mean good people. I mean people that are faithful, you know, are consistent. And then learn how to overcome when it comes to these things so that, and I love the Apostle Paul, we want to be strong in the grace, but then our job is to share with other people how to come out of the bondage. And all these things... He says, all the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be, be able to teach others. He says, also, you therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. You must, you must, saints, endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. You are a soldier of Jesus Christ. You are a son. You are a daughter. But you are a soldier, and there is a war that is going on in your mind whether you like it or not. There's going to be a fight for your mind. And you, have to, you and I have to see ourselves as soldiers in a war. It's not a natural, it's a spiritual war that's being played out in the natural. And the devil wants to play around with our heads, and we are not going to let him win these mind games. Because I understand I'm a soldier. When I, I'm a Christian, but I'm a, I'm a soldier for Christ. And I have to make sure that my mind is protected and I must endure hardship, meaning there's going to be times when you come under a barrage and an attack and you don't know what's going on. And the devil's going to try to throw the kitchen sink at your brain. Can I have an amen, y'all? And there's going to be hardship there that you're going through a moment where you are fighting for your spiritual life. And your thinking is under siege. And you're going to be barraged with all kinds of stuff. And it's a moment, but we have to realize that I'm a soldier and I got to fight back. Look at your neighbor and tell him, you got to fight back. Come on, look at somebody else and tell him, you got to fight back. Stop letting the devil win the mind games. Start confusing him. Can I have an amen, y'all? We're going to get to some points here how we turn the tables, but we have to fight back. You're a soldier. It's not going anywhere. And if you don't step up and fight, you're going to lose. 
And, and you and I will find ourselves going down a road and we look up and say, what happened to my walk with Christ? Man, I used to be on fire for God, man. I used to love the presence of God, the things of God, the people of God. What happened to me? I used to love coming to church and singing the songs. What happened to me? Man, now I'm at home. I'm, I'm thinking about this and that and this person and that. Man, the, the devil don't got me to hate the church. Don't go there anymore. They don't like you. And I don't want you the, the people there. They're just trying to get in your business. You better stay away from that church. They look, they trying to demand too much. They think that this they and the devil started telling you, oh, don't go to the well. Because he know we're going to cast them demons out. In the name of Jesus. Don't go back there. See, they don't like you. Don't. It's a lie. It's the devil. See, the pastor, he didn't speak to you when he walked by. I didn't even see you. My goodness, I didn't even see you. You listening to the devil. <laughs> and so what happens is, say, let me get through this. We have to see that where is a hardship aspect of it, of just Christianity in general, but when it comes to your mind being barraged in your mind. Look at verse 4. No one entangled engages in warfare, entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. The hardworking farmer must first be partaker of the crops. Consider what I say, and may the Lord give you understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel, for which I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even to the point of change. But the word of God is not chained. I love Apostle Paul's perspective because his external circum circumstances never took away from his desire to accomplish his mission. And he knew that even though I'm going through, I have a tough moment, I'm in this situation, at least the word of God that has the power to change people's lives and that message is still going forth and God is going to be glorified in it going forth which gives people an opportunity to change their mind and to go in a different direction. Well, for us, we have to stop seeing we, our Christianity just can't be circumstantial. We can't say I'm going to be obedient to the degree that God makes everything perfect for me. I'm not going to be. And so for us, we have to see that there's going to be hardship. There's going to be tough times. There's going to be warfare. There's going to be fights. There's going to be dealings in our mind. It's part of built into the covenant that we have with God and the resistance of the devil. But the Apostle Paul said the word of God's not changed, though. And he rejoiced in that. And for us, we want to make sure we have this same mentality as we're going forth. And God is using you as an instrument of righteousness in the earth. Can I have an amen? He says in verse 10, he says, Therefore I endure all things for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain salvation, which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. This is a faithful saying. For if we die with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we are faithful, he faithless, he remains faithful. He can ne not deny himself. Now, I want to talk about a couple of things that are going to help us in this battle. Number one is the word of God. We talked about this. Our thoughts have to be changed. And the way that they are changed, changed is by allowing God's thoughts to become our thoughts. That means we have to embrace what he says to us personally. Stop listening to the devil. Allow God to speak to you. If he says that you're fearfully and wonderfully made, you're fearfully and wonderfully made. If he says you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. If he says that you are an heir and a joint heir with Christ, you are a joint heir and an heir of, of God through Jesus Christ. 
If he says that no weapon formed against you shall prosper, that means no weapon formed. They may be formed, but it's not going to prosper. If he says that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world, then greater is he that is in We started to start embracing his words. Can I have an amen? And taking that to the bank. The devil wants to confuse you with the word. Jesus begins to fight in the, gar um, in the wilderness, and the devil took the scripture, twisted them, and tried to use them against Jesus. But Jesus knew the truth. And he fought off the devil with the word of God. And for us, we have to see this. And what he says to you personally. So, number one, it's the word of God. What God says to you, what God says to you through his word. We have to embrace that and stop debating about it. You don't see the Jesus sitting down debating with the devil, going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. He said what he had to say, and it shut the devil's mouth, and he moved on. We get into this whole battle with God and with God's word with the devil, and the devil is crafty. He's not dumb. He's been deceiving Deceiving human beings for thousands of years, way before you even came on the scene. He'd been deceiving people, great ones, tricking them, getting them. And we have to understand we have a formidable opponent that's definitely trying to take us out, and he's going to try to bombard your mind. Will you hit him back with the scripture? Take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and start chopping him down. Can I have an amen, y'all? Start chopping him down with the Word of God. We have to get that in our minds. Number two, we're going to take the helmet of salvation. We've got to take the helmet of salvation. The helmet protects your mind. The helmet protects your mind. When you understand the depths of salvation, it will protect, it will guard your mind from the attacks of the devil. We have to understand the depths of Jesus' death, his burial, and his resurrection. What does that do? It fortifies our mind. The devil will tell you, you're not saved. He's not going, Jesus didn't die for you. He was just a good man. He's not the son of God. And the devil will try to bombard your mind concerning your own salvation and concerns salvation. And we have to be willing to fight back using the knowledge that we have and what God has said through his word concerning Jesus' death, his burial, and his resurrection. And that has to be fixed in our minds. Don't let the devil trick you. Out of walking with God and understanding what the covenant is all about. And so for us, the helmet of salvation is so important for us. It's how we fight back. And as men and women of God, if you don't know that you're saved, the devil's not going to tell you. I say that all the time because the devil's not going to tell you. And then another thing, let me say this. When you're dealing with the devil, walk in the authority that you have based on salvation. Stop entertaining. Well, he's too strong. He's putting pressure on me. Well, put pressure on him. Let him know you're not going to win this. You're not going to win this battle. In my mind, you're not going to win, man, because I don't believe you. Talk to him like a person. He is. He's been talking to you. Trying to fill your mind with garbage. Number three, the thing that we have to do is we have to learn to be good guardians of our mind. Be good stewards and guardians of your mind. And I talked about this earlier, saints. If you're going to win this battle... You and I, if we're going to win this battle, you and I have to be very particular about what we let in our minds. I was telling the singles the other day, I said, listen, if you're single in the room and you desire to be married, some singles, they don't desire to be married. They don't want to be married. They, they, they tired of people. But anyway, 
They don't want to be married, so praise God. But if you're single and you desire to be married one day, stop watching all these, these love dramas. You sitting up at night watching all these love dramas and, oh, and, and then envisioning yourself. And Can I have an amen, y'all? Be, be sensitive about what, you, what you're entertaining with your mind. Be sensitive about the music you're listening to, too. You know, like I always say, stop listening and turn out the lights. The party's over. You at home by yourself. <laughs> and, then, and then the devil starts playing around in your mind. And then you know what the devil will do? As soon as you start listening and turn off the lights, the party's over and the devil playing around, then Junebug calls your phone. This must be a sign from the Lord. No, it's the devil. It's the devil, the devil. <laughs> rebuke the devil and rebuke yourself. <laughs> and, and so what happens is you, we have to be sensitive about those things. Well, people aren't. They're not, and then the devil starts beating them. He starts winning because they will not guard the fort. They won't guard the fort. And the devil starts playing mind games, and then people give in, but they don't know they've been feeding the narrative in their mind. And we have to be better guardians of our minds. Guardians of our mind. That I'm protecting what I see and what I hear. I'm protecting myself from these things. I don't want it to get into my mind get embedded, and then ultimately get into my heart, which results in an action that's going to put me in conflict with God. We have to learn how to win. Well, this is a message we talk about all the time, but it, we have to be reminded of this because in the church, outside of the church, the devil's always trying to get us, give us suggestions to go in the wrong direction. We have to learn to say no. We have to learn to say, God, I trust your word and what you're saying to me. I thank you for the helmet of salvation that protects me. I thank you that you've given me the ability to guard my mind and to protect myself from things that could potentially get me to go in a wrong direction. I have to learn how to do this. I have to do and then the last thing I'm going to say is this. And I didn't talk about this as much as in the singles ministry, but I want to say this. Surround yourself, and I, I said it earlier, surround yourself with good counsel. Surround yourself with, with people that are able to sit down and that you can talk to that you know are not going to sympathize with you. But are going to push you in the right direction regardless of how you feel. Like I said, when you isolate yourself, you're seeking your own desire. You, you, in the multitude of counselors, there's safety. You get p somebody to bounce things off. Oh, man, I'm thinking about this, what you think. And they can give you truth. I want people around me that, that love me enough just to tell me the truth. They don't care about how I feel. What's right and what's going to help you and protect you. Now, everything I just said right here is necessary for us as saints of God, older people. But these are principles that we've got to start sharing with our kids, with our friends, so people can overcome. Because right now we have a, a society that's addicted to prescription drugs because they don't know how to fight off the attacks of the devil and they're just popping themselves with all these opioids and all these other things and they can't and they and they can't make it through a day not everybody on the planet is bipolar Some people are just fighting a spiritual fight and they don't know how to fight and rebuke the devil and re cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. 
Now, there are people that need help in that area. I understand. But there's some people, it's just the devil just, just bombarding people's minds. And instead of the church standing up and saying, you know what? This is the devil. You got to fight him back. We'll say, oh, no, you need to take this and that and this. And, 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 and then what happens is a person, we got kid three years old, five years old on drugs. And it hurts my heart. Because now they're writing all these articles about, about all this stuff. But they done got so many of these kids addicted to drugs and they just don't like school. I don't like algebra. And they just say every kid, every kid's got ADD. Can I preach this this morning? Because we got to get our kids' minds back too. The devil's trying to attack them too. You got to be kidding me. Not all these kids have ADD. I'm glad my mom didn't put me on that. She understood that I just didn't like that teacher. I didn't like that teacher. I didn't like math. I didn't like Spanish. I didn't like none of that. I didn't want to play football and get them out of here and make some money. You know. Can I be real this morning with y'all? Now, our kids, they need to learn. They need to sit down and learn. You need to learn, son. Don't even think about it. You're going to finish that. You're going to finish college. But anyway, you cannot like it, but you still got to do it. But it doesn't mean that they're a bad kid and they don't have any sense and they, that they're crazy and they need to be on drugs for the rest of their life and they mind. These mind games the devil been playing around with our kids. And the church sits back because we don't, we're powerless and we don't stand up and say, we're going to teach you, son, how to rebuke the devil. You're going to be 10 and you're going to learn how to rebuke the devil when he tried to tell you to act fool in the school. Can I have an amen? We're going to teach you how to rebuke the devil when he tries to tell you to act the fool in the school. You're going to rebuke him, and you're going to keep on, and you're going to get A's too. Can I have an amen, y'all? Can I preach this this morning? Lord Jesus, we thank you. That there thank you for joining us for Times of Refreshing. This program is a production of the Well Christian Community. You can learn more about our church and the various ministries we offer by visiting us on the web at www.thewellchurch.net or by calling our office at 925-479-1414. Or if you're looking for a church home or visiting the Livermore area, we would love for you to come by and visit us. Our service times are Sunday, 10.30 a.m. We are located at 2333 Nissan Drive in Livermore, California, 94551. For direction to our church, call us at 925-479-1414. Until next time, may Jesus Christ be highly exalted in your life and may his word bring you a peace that transcends all understanding.